Welcome to another Eric Waite Whiskey Study. In this video, we are continuing our study of the business of Scotch whiskey. In this episode, we're going to look at uh, two issues regarding the uh, whiskey marketplace. The first is uh, other competing spirits. And then secondly, we're going to look at uh, what the Scotch Whiskey Association considers to be uh, sort of discrimination against Scotch whiskey. Now, usually when I do one of these videos, I will sort of do a mini re-review of a whiskey that I've already reviewed. Uh, but uh, for this occasion, I'm going to uh, sort of retaste the botanist Isla Dry Gin. Uh, this is produced by Brooke Aladi. I've already reviewed this, but I'm going to make a uh, gin and tonic with it. A little bit different, though. Uh, most say, you know, put two-thirds uh, tonic to one-third gin. Add either, some use rosemary, some will use uh, uh, a lime. I'm going to use uh, a lime. And then some will also put uh, a little sprig of mint in there instead of rosemary. Don't have any mint handy, so I'm just going to go with the lime. And rather than just normal sparkling water, I'm actually going to use a lime Perrier. And to measure what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the Glencairn, fill it up, or one. Ooh, that already filled it up. I guess I'm doing one part gin and one part Perrier. It filled up a lot more than I thought it would. So we're going to do a little bit of heavy, uh, a little heavy uh, gin there. But I'll, okay, so I'm making 50 50 rather than uh, no, <laughs> three, two to one. That is right to the top. <laughs> Need to say, I don't make uh, gin and tonics very often put in my lime, and then we're gonna <laughs> stir it around just a little bit. So we're in September 2019, and don't wanna swirl it too much because you don't wanna get rid of all your bubbles. Uh, <laughs> we're in what we call here an Indian summer. So typically you get into September, you start heading into fall, the leaves start falling, it starts cooling off, you get those cooler mornings, but we usually get like one week all of a sudden, boom, another flash of summer. They call it Indian summer. I don't know why, they just do. And we are hitting it now. So it is like 95 degrees Fahrenheit uh, today. Let's give this a little taste. Mm. I'll let you know what I think after this video. Let's get into the competing spirits with Scotch whiskey. It has been argued that globally, Scotch whiskey may be losing market share to dark rum. There has also been a phenomenal boom in gin demand driven by a combination of factors such as a growing cocktail culture, an increase in local gin production, and consumers' desire to know the provenance of their drinks and a wider variety of flavors from the different gin brands. Gin has been seeing a huge boom in demand both domestically and overseas, and exports in 2017 increased by 59 million pounds, or 12.5%. However, gin exports made up only 9% of total spirits exports at 532 million pounds, dwarfed by the 4,461 million pounds of whiskies. In order to stay ahead, Scotch whiskey needs to stay creative to innovate and maintain competitive pricing. The Scotch Whiskey Association is confident that it will prevail long term by continuing to beat down trade barriers. You know what, I like that. Um, the gin is definitely, definitely there. I can get all the herbs, I can get that juniper note, but the lime, I like the fact that I didn't just use normal flavored uh, lime, but I actually used a lime uh, Perrier along with uh, the little slice of lime. Don't know if I necessarily need any mint. So it's really cool, really, really refreshing on a day like today. So one of the things about, interesting things about uh, gin right now, when I was over in Scotland in July 2019, uh, what I heard everyone talking about was gin, 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 gin. I was really, really surprised. And in the um, diploma course for uh, single malt Scotch whiskey that I took at the Edinburgh Whiskey Academy, 
they actually said that Scotland sold more gin than Scotch whiskey, and I found that rather surprising, or that it's on a higher increase than Scotch whiskey. And I found that really, really uh, surprising. So I I'm, I'm, don't go to a lot of bars, I'm not in the cocktail scene, but that's definitely what is probably feeding that is the cocktail scene. If you look at cocktail uh, channels on YouTube, the, the biggest ones are more than twice the size of the, even the largest uh, whiskey channels, right? So the, the, probably the, like, one of the largest, which is uh, uh, Drink This, probably has like a half a million subscribers, and that's more than twice as uh, the Whiskey uh, Vault, which has probably around a little over 200,000 subscribers. So cocktails are really, really, really big. Those of us who are devoted to Scotch whiskey, or devoted even to devoted just to whiskey and just whiskey drinkers, we are really in the matter. All right. Mm. Really, really, really nice. So the next issue we want to look at um, is the markets that Scotch whiskey is trying to get their foot in the door with and some of the uh, troubles they have in some particular markets. Scotch whiskey is sold in over 200 markets worldwide. However, a study in 2009 identified some 687 barriers to trade in 187 markets. Some of these are quite simple low-level tariffs, while others are unfair and excessive barriers to trade, such as India's 150% tariff. India has been a focus for the industry for a long time. It is believed that if the import tariff is significantly reduced, the potential to acquire new Scotch whiskey customers, who at present just can't afford Scotch whiskey due to the high duty, will be massive given India's vast population. A successful drop in import duty was achieved in 2002, but since then the rate of duty has been some 150%. This is particularly high compared to other growing markets, such as China, which is 10%, or Brazil, which is 20%. There have been discussions between the EU and India to form a free trade agreement to eliminate the discriminatory 150% duty. As mentioned, one result of the recent EU referendum in Britain is making it unclear what will become of the EU or India free trade agreement and what it will mean to the UK and ultimately Scotch whiskey. In certain markets, there are several trade barriers which unfairly discriminate against Scotch whiskey. Unfortunately, there is nothing that the brand owner or distillery can do about this as it is out of their control. These taxes will ultimately affect the margins achieved by the brand owner or distillery as well as the importer and distributor. However, as members of the Scotch Whiskey Association, they can hope that their continued lobbying of foreign governments will help to reduce tariffs and duties on Scotch Whiskey. One example of an extreme tariff is found in Egypt. Egypt has the highest import tariff on Scotch Whiskey at 3,000%. Interestingly, this is reduced to 300% if it is for sale or consumption in tourist resorts and establishments. Alrighty, so one of the things that seems kind of strange, say particularly about Egypt, is why is it that tourists who are staying at resorts and so forth uh, can buy a Scotch whiskey much cheaper, even though it is 300% markup, that's still insane, uh, or 300% uh, tariff, that's still insane, but uh, you know, it's far less than 3,000%. Well, I, I watched a video on uh, this guy who's visiting India, uh, and he was in a particular uh, region of India in which the locals there cannot buy alcoholic beverages. So, and uh, this gentleman was from, from England, and he's in India. And he actually had to go online to get a permit to then go buy uh, some whiskey at a particular place. And those permits are not sold to the locals. They're not sold to the citizens, but they all are sold to tourists. Now, you got to think. Why do they have one law for tourists, right? People who are at, at resorts, and another law for the locals? Well, the laws are usually because of some sort of religious reason, uh, whether it's a form of Hinduism or a form of Islam. But uh, these, whether it's Egypt or you're talking about India, 
they don't necessarily impose their religious view on the consumption of alcohol on visitors, right? Because they want tourists to come in and spend money. So they're not necessarily going to uh, uh, penalize them any more than the huge amount of tax they got to pay and the huge prices they got to pay, new tariffs they got to pay. But they can still drink it legally, but usually they can only drink it at the resort or uh, yet they have a permit. So if you're walking down the street with beer or whiskey or something like that, you have to have a permit in your hand. Um, but but if you're not Indian, right, or if you're not Egyptian, you can buy it and no one's going to bother you. They don't really, really care. They're only trying to uh, uphold certain religious views on their own people, which I, th I think is kind of in interesting. But I think if as long as it's a religious reason as to why they have such high tariffs, it doesn't matter what the Scotch Whiskey Association does. They are not going to change um, those laws. No matter how much uh, you know, try to argue about imports, and you we we you import uh, stuff to our country, we export stuff to your your to your country. It doesn't matter because that religious view of that culture and that society uh, is going to prevail over anything else. They're they're not going to change those laws. Mm, 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 mm. Alrighty. So about that gin character is really, really kicking in there. I think uh, next time I'm, <laughs> I'll measure it out ahead of time, make sure I got a two to one rather than a 50-50. Alrighty, if you subscribe to this channel, I want to thank you very much. If you haven't yet subscribed, would you like watching my videos? I would greatly appreciate it if you would subscribe. Give this video a thumbs up. Share with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, and other social networking channels. And we are just about done. We're coming close to the end, and if you've been watching all my videos thus far, I want to congratulate you, but uh, we got just one or two more to go, and then this series will be done, and then we'll be moving on to my series on, of videos uh, from my trip to uh, Scotland. All right, until next time, cheers. Hey, if you like my review, be sure to check out these other whiskey videos.